for infinite slab with internal heat generation following are the conditions first heat source is located at the center second temperature at both sides of slab wall are same third heat transferred from slab walls to atmosphere by convection process derive the derivation for first temperature distribution in slab second heat flow third temperature distribution in slab when one side is insulated we will first draw the diagram for infinite slab with internal heat generation so this is the infinite slab with thickness l so we will show here the thickness l now we will move for the given conditions so what is the first condition so first condition heat generated at the center so we have to select here the center point and at the center line we have to show the heat source and that will generate the heat that is qg per unit volume per unit time now this heat is getting conducted towards the both sides of this slab equally because the heat source located at the center so we will show here the direction so from this center this is the first direction that is the direction x where the heat is getting conducted and here is the another direction that is heat is getting conducted to this other side so here is also x but what is the value of this x so if we observe the distance of this x that is from center towards this one side and from center towards this other side so this is the center point so we can say that this x is equal to l by 2 now we will move for the second condition temperature on both sides are same now if we observe this diagram the location of the heat source is at the center and the heat conducted equally so here temperature on both sides are same so we will show here the temperature at this wall so at this side there is temperature t1 so same temperature is here so we will also show here this also temperature t1 now third condition is that heat transferred outside by convection so here outside this slab there is fluid which is having coefficient of heat transfer or we can say coefficient of convective heat transfer h so this h we have to use and this fluid particular fluid is in contact with the surface of this sides and there is the heat transfer process is taking place by convection so remember from this heat source to this side heat transfer is by conduction because here solid material is there and outside this slab there is some fluid is present and heat transfer is by convection so outside fluid we will consider here the temperature of fluid so we will consider any particular um, notation so we will consider here as a ta so this ta is nothing but the temperature of outside fluid and this h what is this h that is the convective heat transfer coefficient so this is the diagram as per the given conditions now we will move for the first question that is we will find out the equation for the temperature distribution for as per the given conditions now for that we will refer here the poisson equation so what is the poisson equation that is d square t by dt square plus qg by k is equal to 0 now what is this qg so we know that it is the heat generated per unit volume per unit time k that is the thermal conductivity now this d square t by dx square that is the relation in between this temperature as well as this direction x that is the heat is flowing towards the direction x now we will simplify this we will take here the integration so i will say that integrating on both sides so what is the integration that is dt by dx plus qg by kx and here is the constant of integration that is c1 now we will again 
simplify this so I will write here integrating on both sides. Now integrating on both sides with respect to x that we have to write. So again how we can write here as a t plus qg by kx square by 2 which is equal to c1x plus c2. Now this c1 and c2 are the constants of integration. This is the simplified equation and we will give here the equation number 1. Now we will find out the values of c1 and c2. So for this we will take the value of x. Now if we observe at the center line what is the value of x. So at the center line x is equal to 0. And at these sides or we can say at this one side what is the value of x. So it will start from 0 and ends towards x. And this x is equal to L by 2. Now we will first take x is equal to 0. Now here is the equation which is in the form of c1 only. So in this equation only one unknown term that is c1. And we will take here at the center x is equal to 0. So if we put x is equal to 0 in this equation then this term will become 0. The second term will also become 0. So we can say that c1 is equal to 0. So this value c1 is equal to 0 is important. Now in the same way we will find out the value of c2. So we will take here this second equation and we will put the value at these sides that is x is equal to l by 2. So what will happen x is equal to L by 2 then at that time if we refer this side then what is the temperature. So temperature at this side is T1. So we have to put T is equal to T1 for this equation. And C1 is equal to 0 that we have already calculated. So we have to put all these values that is x is equal to L by 2, T is equal to T1 and C1 is equal to 0. Then here this equation will become T1 plus QG by K. Now X square. That means L by 2 square. That is L square by 4. And here in denominator already 2 is there. That is L square by 8 is equal to. Now this C1 X. So C1 is 0. So this term will become 0 plus C2. So what is the value of C2? So C2 is equal to T1 plus QG by K into L square by 8. So these are the values of C1 and C2. So we have to put these two values in this equation number 1. So when we put these values in equation number 1 that is T plus QG by K X square by 2 is equal to. Now value of C1 is 0 so this term will become 0 plus value of C2. So we have to put this value that is T1 plus QG by K into L square by 8. To obtain the temperature distribution equation, we have to simplify this equation. So, I will take T on one side and this term to the other side. So, here is the plus sign. So, it will become minus. So, we can rewrite this as a T is equal to T1 plus QG by K L square by 8 minus QG by K X square by 2. Now, again we will simplify. So, here we have to take as a common term QG by K L square by 8. So in this term qg by k is present but l square by 8 is not present. So we have to maintain here l square by 8. So how to maintain? So I will write here t1 plus qg by k l square by 8 minus qg by k. Now l square is not present so I will multiply and divide here with l square. So l square by l square then here 8 is there, in denominator 8 is there. So we have to maintain here denominator 8. But 2 is already present. So I have to multiply and divide here for numerator and denominator with 4. So I will write here 4x square divided by 4 into 2. So this 4 by 4 is getting cancelled. So this is the simple. Now we have to take uh, qg by k l square by 8 as a common. So remember... Here L square by 8 that this term will we can take here as a common term. So I will write here e is equal to T1 plus QG by K 
n squared by 8. So this is the common term that we have to take. So here qg by k n squared by 8 we have to take as a 1. So inside the bracket we will write 1 minus. So this qg by k and n squared and 8. This, these terms we have to take common. So what is the remaining in this? That is 4x squared by l squared. 4x squared by l squared. So now again we can simplify this as a which is equal to t1 plus qg by k l square by 8 in the bracket 1 minus. So here is the square so we can take as a common square so inside the bracket I can write here 2x by l bracket square and here on the left hand side we have to write as a t. So if we observe this is the simplified form of the equation for T. So this is the temperature distribution equation for the infinite slab with internal heat generation as per the given conditions. If we observe temperature distribution equation then this T is directly proportional to X square. So we can say that the temperature distribution curve is the parabolic curve. So we will draw here the temperature distribution curve. So from this one side to the other side we have to draw here one parabolic curve. So from this parabolic curve we come to know that the maximum temperature that is T max is at the center. And at this maximum temperature at center value of x is equal to 0. So from this uh, temperature distribution curve we can find out the maximum temperature. So we will put here x is equal to 0. So what is the value of T max? So when we put x is equal to 0 then this term will become 0. Then T is equal to. So here T, T will become T max. T max is equal to T1 plus Qg by K l square by 8. So this is the equation for the maximum temperature. Now we will move for the next question. We will find out what is the heat flow through conduction. So we will first find out heat flow from this heat source towards the one side. So towards the one side what is the distance from the center to the one side that is x is equal to L by 2. So this heat flow is by conduction process. So how we can write the equation? So for this conduction process we will write Q is equal to minus Ka dt by dx at x is equal to L by 2. Because we have to take only one set from the center. Heat source is located at the center. Now this dt by dx from the Poisson's equation we have to write the value of dt by dx. So what is this dt by dx from the Poisson's equation? So we had already one equation that is dt by dx plus qg by k into x is equal to c1. Now this c1 is constant and if we observe the, uh, this uh, constant of integration is having value 0. So we can say that dt by dx at x is equal to l by 2 is equal to we will shift this term to the right hand side minus qg by k l by 2. So we have to put this value of dt by dx to this equation. So here it will become, so I will say that here is the equation number 2. So q is equal to minus ka. Now what is the value of dt by dx at x is equal to l by 2. So this x we have to take l by 2. So, so here minus qg by k l by 2. So this minus minus will become plus k, k getting cancelled. So q is equal to al qg by 2. But this is the heat flow from center towards the one side only. But heat is flowing on both the sides. So here is the heat flow that is Q. And here is also in this direction there is heat flow. That means we have to multiply this equation with 2. So total heat flow that is Q total is equal to 2 multiplied by AL into QG by 2 which is equal to AL QG. Now we will move for the third question. We will find out what is the temperature distribution equation if one side of the slab is insulated. So we will consider here this side of the slab is insulated and heat source is located at the center. So heat will flow towards 
one side only. Now if we observe this diagram, we can say that this heat flow that is heat conduction is taking place from the center towards one side and what will happen after that? So this heat conducted is getting transferred by the convection process from this side or to the atmosphere. So we have to write this equation that is how we can write heat conducted at one side at x is equal to L by 2 is equal to heat convected from side to the atmosphere. So here the heat conduction process is taking place and this heat conduction, the total heat conducted is getting transferred or getting convected to the atmosphere. So what is the heat conduction from center towards one side? That is we have already derived the formula that is Q is equal to ALQG by 2. So this is the heat flow from center towards the one side which is equal to heat convected from this side to the atmosphere. So how we can write? So here is the coefficient of heat transfer by convection H is given. So we have to take this H multiplied by A multiplied by the temperature difference. So temperature at this side and temperature of atmosphere. So we have to take the difference in between this temperature that is T1 minus T. So when we simplify this then here AA is getting cancelled and we can write the equation for T1. So this TA we have to transfer transfer to the left hand side. So this minus TA will become plus. So TA plus QGL by 2 and this H is also we have to transfer to the denominator. So this is the equation for this T1. Now we know that what is the temperature distribution equation. So temperature distribution equation is T is equal to T1 plus QG by K L square by 8 in the bracket 1 minus 2X by L square bracket complete. Now this value of T1 we have to put in this temperature distribution equation. So this T1 I will put here this value that is Ta plus Qg L by 2H. So here is this equation and this is the temperature distribution equation when one side of this lab is insulated. 